Hello everyone and welcome to this rather new video series on the Civil Engineering Essentials channel in which we are going to try to program the finite element method using MATLAB. Now this series might be different from the usual series you find on the Civil Engineering Essentials channel in which it is kind of a programming slash civil engineering hybrid. Now this could be viewed as the continuation of the finite element method series. As a matter of fact, I will be adding those videos to that playlist and having a separate playlist for those videos alone. Now the current end goal of this video series is to achieve the programming of a linear static analysis of bars using the finite element method, as I would need this to perform my own research and the portal frame optimization basically warehouses. And this MATLAB analysis code is part of what I need for my research. Now, why did I choose MATLAB and not Python, for example, or C Sharp? That's a very good question. First things first, I do have a series on the C Sharp, and this is on Udemy. But the reason why I chose MATLAB is because I want to utilize its amazing mathematics abilities, in which it deals with matrices very efficiently, where I do not need to reinvent the wheel. Because if I use Python or, for example, C Sharp, I would need to rely on third party source code to be able for example to perform matrix inversion and whatnot here in matlab i have everything in one place this means also that the final product of this code is not really commercializable but that's not the point because my intention here is not to produce a commercializable code the design steps i'm undertaking here might be used to produce for example your own python code or c sharp code now I come here with around 20 years of experience in programming under my belt. So besides my usual structural analysis experience, I'm also well versed in programming. Now in this video series, I assume that you have the basic principles of programming and the basic principles of MATLAB. However, if you don't, relax. I will try my best to explain the different principles as I go. With that being said, and without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright, now first things first, you can see that MATLAB has some certain spaces in the GUI. And by the way, I'm using MATLAB 2017. Any newer MATLAB would have similar abilities like the one I'm using. The place in the middle here is mainly the console or the command window. This is where I will output things and input things on the go, like could say 5 plus 5 and it will tell me answer equals 10. Now the font size might be a little bit too small, so I will increase it by going to preferences, going to fonts i can change the font so i'll change it to 14 something better for my and your liking now this changes this but doesn't change everything else i don't care because that's my main concern here this is the current folder i have the files i will be producing will appear here and this folder is on my computer this is the workspace it handles all the variables that have been defined now i will start with clc which clears the screen and clear which clears the memory so i'm starting with a clean sheet now i'm going to be using the object oriented programming object oriented programming basically means that instead of having some vague matrices that correspond to different nodes i will consider a node to be a walking talking entity that can do things has an identity and can perform things to my liking now the term object oriented programming is just a fancy term i'll make sure that it becomes clear with the time being now here i'll first of all write edit which opens the editor of matlab this is a file it's called a script file you can also access a script file by clicking on new and script and that's my script file i'll save that and i will call it main I call it main because this is the script file where I will test everything. It's kind of a remnant of what I like to do in other programming languages. In other programming languages, usually the main function is the function which is your entry point to the program. So I will be basically doing my stuff here. Now, another thing I need is I will start programming my objects. Now, the finite element, as you have seen from the finite element series, I will be linking on the top right, is nodes and members. So it stands to reason that I need an object called node. I open a file called untitled, I'll save it, and I will call this str node. The reason why I call it str node is just my liking. I like to call it str for structure and node as it's a node. Now this is a class or an object. It is an entity. To let MATLAB know that there's an entity, I will first of all write class def, 
which means class definition, and then the name of the class, str node. Now MATLAB needs you to end anything that you open. If you open a class def, you need to end it. Now, what does this node have? What are the things that the node should have and know? Now, the easiest thing to think about is it should have coordinates, x, y, and z. Those things are part of the node, kind of like an engine and glass and steering is part of a car. So I write here properties as those are the properties that the str node has. Now, of course, since I open something, I must end it. And here I will start writing my properties. I will say that it has an ID, which is the identifier of the node. Every node needs its own ID. Check out robot videos because those are easier to be visible. Then I would need the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. Now I will add other properties as I see fit. For example, in the future, I will add here a support. But for now, we still haven't programmed any supports. So I think those are enough. I will write some comments. Now, commentary is code that is not executed in MATLAB, so I can write anything here and it doesn't matter. I don't need to be syntactically correct when I write comments. Those are the properties. Now I need to start doing my methods. Methods are abilities for the object. Look, properties are what an object has and methods are what an object can do. So if you have an action, that's a method. For example, a car has a seat, has a glass, has engine, has doors, and a car can drive and can stop and can do things. If you say something has, that's a property. And if you say something can do, that's a method. There are usually something called a constructor. This is a method used to build the object because when you build a car, you need to say that this car has such and such engine and so on, so weight and so on. So when I build a node, I must give him the XYZ components of the node. So I need something called a constructor. Now this is a method or a function. So here I would say function. And of course, since I open something, I must end it. Now what do I have in the function? I have here the object which I want to create. And this object equals str node off. So now I'm creating a function or, or a constructor that gives me back an object by inputting some stuff. Now for now, I want him to input me the ID, the X, the Y, and the Z coordinate. So the user, when he wants to create an str node, must provide the ID X, Y, and Z. Which means now that inside the function, for the object that has been created, the, the ID must be set to the ID given, and the X, X, X must be set to the X given, and the Y must be set to the Y given, and so on. What does this mean? It means basically that when you call the str node function, an object gets created, but the object will have empty properties. Now, since the user gave those properties, i.e. passed them inside the function, those properties will get assigned to the object I created by saying the object.id, and by the way, the dot means inside or access. So the ID of the object is ID. The X of the object is X. And by the way, this X is the given X, whereas this X is this X. Don't mess it up. I know some of you are pro programmers and I understand you should use small letters here. You could even write here blah, and then you must of course give the blah to the ID. What I'm saying is whatever you write here should make sense because you want to assign it. So I'll keep it as ID. You know what? You win. I can even make them small letter to kind of reduce the confusion. The word object is similar to the word this in C sharp. Now, another function I like to usually have is a function called toString. The function toString basically will print out the conditions of the object. It's good for debugging. Now, here I will let him f print f. f print f in MATLAB means please print something out. What do I want him to print out? I want him to tell me that this is node number and I will put a percentage sign with an I because there will be a number. This is a placeholder for number, integer. And then I will say at and basically give him the coordinates. The coordinates are going to be a number 5.2 floating. So it's a floating point number, another number 5.2 floating and another number 5.2 floating. This means that I will be having the first number for the ID the second for the X, the third for the Y, and the fourth for the Z. So to tell him this, right? So what I want him to put here is going to be object.id. It's very important that I write them in the correct order. This means that object.id is going to fill the first gap, 
object.x is going to fill the second gap, and you get the idea. I think we are done so far with this, so it's time to test it. I go to my main function because this is where my main entry point is going to be. I will say node 1 equals str node. So I'm calling an str node, I'm building an str node. If you open the bracket, you can see MATLAB telling you it needs the ID, the X and Y and Z. Why is it asking you those things? Because I told him to ask for those things. So I will say here, my ID is negative one, a dummy ID. My X is zero, my Y is zero, and my Z is zero. Then I will say node two, and this equals str node. And again, I'm building another node this time. And I will give it an ID of, I don't know, maybe I should give this an ID of zero, one, and maybe 5 in the x, 5 in the y, and nothing in the z. Then I will basically ask node 1 to string. So I will call node 1 to become to string. And uh, by the way, you can see that to string needs the object to be passed in. I'm not passing the object. And this is a quirk in MATLAB. I will exactly explain to you what this is. Now, for those of you who have experience in programming, you would think I should write like to string and node 1. Or for example, node one to string node one, because the function asks for an object, so I must pass the object inside the function. Fun fact here is that you don't need to do that. In MATLAB, when you ask to to string, the first thing that MATLAB would think about is to pass in itself as an object. So now I will basically push F5 or run, and I can see uh, that it looks ugly. You can see that it got stuck to each other. I think this is a technicality. I should push an enter key here. I think I haven't pushed the enter key here. No, I didn't. So I'd go here and say slash n and then save and run again. Another thing I like to do is I like to start my, edit, my main file with CLC and clear. CLC cleans the screen, clear cleans the workspace. So if we hit F5 now, we can see node zero at zero, zero, zero and node one at five, five, zero. Fantastic. I will need those things later, by the way, but now I'm starting to build things. The second thing I want to build here is a line. Now, the line has a ton of things, so let's start building it. This I will save and call str line, which stands for structural line. First of all, this is an object, so I call class def, name the object, and of course, end it. Here, it has properties, and it has a ton of properties, and it also has methods. And by the way, if you are a fan of encapsulation, you could actually assign some properties to become private by saying here, access equals private. I'm not going to do that, but basically private means that this X is only visible from inside the object itself. So if I don't call this private, then I still have the ability here, for example, to change node1.x equals 5. And then, for example, node 1 to string. Look what happens if I do this. If I do this, you can see that the code runs. Now, first of all, you get the two, two strings here, and you get the two nodes before it got changed. Then I changed node 1x to 5, which means when I called the two string again, the 5 was not the x. I'm a fan of encapsulation, but since this is a research project, I'm not going to do encapsulation. If you want to see, if I go here and say access equals private, I'm not sure if it's small or capital letter. We will know only way to, one way to find out. Then if I push F5, you can see that there is a problem. It tells you that you're trying to access X. Oh, it's private small, really? Okay, fine, private small. Let's run again. You still get the error because you say here, you cannot set the X property in str node. Well, why cannot I do this? Because I declared it to be private, so no one can do this. Now you could have uh, public setters and getters, which make some checks, but I don't want to do this. I will keep it as simple as possible because I want to program the finite element method for research purposes, not for commercial purposes. Check out my Udemy course if you want to see something on C Sharp. For now, enjoy MATLAB. Now we have our str node, and it's got, by the way, this file, 18 lines, it looks very harmless. It's going to be massively, massively larger by the end of this video series. In str line, uh, this is going to have a ton of properties. The first two properties are start. Maybe I should call it node 1 and node 2. Node 1 and node 2. Because I will assume that my line has only two nodes. Node 1 is the starting node. Node 2 is the ending node. Now the line will have materials and whatnot. So it will have a lot of things. 
But for now, I want to build my software from down top. So the complexity is going to increase later. So for now, I need node 1, node 2. Those are the minimalistic things I need. Uh, for the methods, I need a constructor for that thing. So I'll say here, uh, function object equals str line off. And now I'm going to ask him to apply some, to add some things. Now I forgot, by the way, to write an ID because every single object in the final method must have its own ID. In the str line, I will pass in the ID node 1 and node 2 for now. Later, I will be passing in materials and so on. All right, now in the object here, uh, I said I'm going to use small letters for the parameters and to avoid confusion. Now here, the object of ID or dot ID gets assigned to the ID that was passed in, object dot, and there is something cool. If you push the tab button, you see all the parameters you can select equals node 1 and object dot node 2 equals node 2. Now another function I want to quickly do is function to string, which takes the object and outputs a message. Now I don't know what the message would be. I will basically output f and f and uh, I don't know. I will say here line number and then I will ask it for an integer and push the enter button. And of course the integer is going to be object dot id. And then I will also use object dot node one dot to string. See, this is the cool thing about object oriented programming. I don't need to repeat commands because now I can ask the node one and node two to do that for me. So now what happens here is when I call the to string function, first of all, this message gets printed in the console and then the function will ask node one of the object to talk about itself, meaning that it will actually access the to string of the nodes, so it would go here. And then it would go to node 2 and apply the same thing. Let's see this in action by taking a look here. So now I will say here, line 1 equals, or maybe I can just say here, uh, display. And then I will say here, nodes. And then maybe later I would say display here. And then I will say lines. All right, so now line 1, I will say here, uh, equals str line off, and it needs for me the ID and so on. Let's give it an ID of 1, and it needs node 1, which is node 1, by the way, and node 2. And then I will ask it to talk about itself. So line 1 dot to string. All right, let's push F5 and see what happens. Nothing happens. It seems there is an error. Oh, F print. It's not F print. It's F print F. Let's try again to go to the main and push F5. And you can see the magic happening. So the nodes, this is this message. And then each node talks about itself. And then it says line, which is this message. And then the line talks about itself. But wait, the line talks about itself. Still, I see all those things. I see all those things because when the line talks about itself, it talks about itself and that's the nodes talk about themselves. It's pretty cool how you can do it. So I think we have done something here. To finalize, I want to uh, have a controller because I don't think I want the user to apply nodes willy-nilly. I need a controller that does that for me. I also need a controller that keeps track of the nodes that have been defined and is able to plot them. But I think that's enough for now. That's the first video for today. So yeah, I think this is for next time. Now I will be uploading those source codes to my dear channel members. Speaking of my channel members, I want to give an object-oriented size shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.